It's a god awful small affair to the girl with the mousy hair. I met the girl on the Mary one day. But her mummy is yelling no. Daddy has told her to go Listen, young lady But her friend is nowhere to be seen So how'd you become such a hot shot now actor? Paul Thomas Anderson has brought us some of the most unique films of the last few years. Punch Drunk Love, The Master, Boogie Nights, There Will Be Blood, just to name a few. Yet, while many can argue these films are very well done, few can say that they're films that general audiences are going to be captivated by. I mention this because for a long time I heard people saying how Licorice Pizza was going to be his most accessible film to date. Unfortunately, I really don't think that's the case. But whether you consider that a good or a bad thing is really going to depend on what you personally think about the movie. Myself, I really didn't care much for it. Though I can admit that this is in fact another well done film by Paul. For the film, we follow Gary, played by Cooper Hoffman, who falls for an older girl named Alana, played by Alana Heim. The two are not the best match for each other and are constantly in and out of a relationship together. The movie follows this path of theirs and their interactions with the people around them. The film is a love letter to the 70s and the people who grew up during that time. And if that happens to be you, you might enjoy the film well enough. Now my distaste for it doesn't come from the fact that I can't relate to the surroundings, but because the two leads are so goddamn annoying, they are constantly butting heads with one another and it's obviously a relationship that just doesn't work, but the film keeps indulging in it in the back and forth and I think it does it far too many times. And by the end of the film, I, I really just didn't care. That being said, the performances are all outstanding, especially that of Alana. She has that spunkiness to her, and she is very well fleshed out as a character who's still trying to find herself and what she wants. The supporting cast is also very good. My favorite, along with yours I'm sure, being Bradley Cooper, who no doubt steals the show whenever he's on screen. I really wish the side characters were more present in the film because I definitely had the most fun when they were on screen. I also really like the look of the film. This is really what I imagined the 70s to look like, and I like seeing all the trends and styles kind of surrounding everyone and influencing them. I, I think it's just done very well here, and it's very aesthetically pleasing. I don't know how people growing up in that era who remember that era <laughs> will react to it, but for me, I really like that. And I will also admit that the writing is very sharp and can be funny at points as well. Now, I do want to discuss the black mark the film has earned with its racist scene, since it does seem to be somewhat affecting on how the film has performed. At one point in the movie, there's a character who's married to a Japanese woman. The man, when speaking to the woman, starts to use a very stereotypical, over-the-top Japanese accent in order to communicate with her. Let me just say that I'm personally okay if a racist scene is in a movie, if it does one of two things. The first is that it serves the nature of the film. If the movie is taking a look at racism or if the character themselves are racist and the film is shining a light on that. The second being is if it's a comedy, which Licorice Pizza is, if the joke is very funny. Now, not hurtful, funny mind you, but actually cleverly written and is funny. And unfortunately, Licorice Pizza's scene is neither. It's neither insightful nor is it funny. And I know the argument most people are, are throwing out are, that's just how it was at the time, you know? And, and, yeah, but the film isn't shining a light on racism. It, it's trying to be a funny scene and failing at it. So I really think the scene would have been better left out of the movie in general. All right, look, despite myself not being a fan, I do think the film has a lot of strong things working for it. So I will still give the movie a 3.5 out of 5 with a recommendation to rent it. Please know that if you haven't been a fan of Paul's films in the past, this really isn't going to change your mind. But if you do have an appreciation for his work, you'll probably continue to do so for this one as well. Oof, this one left a bad taste in my mouth. 
Though I can admit that the film itself is almost like an acquired taste, so uh, take that for what it's worth. Guys, we are coming down to the end of it. We're, we're getting very close. Three films left, so please join me tomorrow for another review. Until then, please stay safe out there, and like always, have a good one.